Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I'm excited to bring you my interview with Jose Rolot. He is the taco editor for Texas Monthly Magazine. What a killer job. What a cool, cool guy. This is my second interview. My first one was more of his background, and it was over a year and a half ago. And at that time, he was extremely excited about this book coming out called American Tacos, A History and Guide. It's supposed to come out on April 15th, Tax Day, 2020. We all know what was going on during that time. We talk a bit about the book coming out and how he had to change things and how it actually semi worked out better because he was able to Zoom and talk to people all across the United States and elsewhere via Zoom. But mainly this interview is wonderful because I feel you get a better idea of who Jose is. I know while I edited this interview, I was smiling. I was smiling throughout most of the interview. We laugh a lot. He's a really good guy and, it, and he really has a strong sense of family. His knowledge of tacos is, is astronomical and, and that comes out through this. And he talks about a tortilla experiment that he did recently, which is interesting because I bring up tortillas and, and it, all of his articles. I'll put a, a links to a bunch of his articles. I'm also going to have a separate blog piece with links to a bunch of his stories because there's a wealth of knowledge. So I'll, I'll make this short and sweet because the interview is about an hour and it's just fabulous. I know you're going to love it. Thank you, Jose, for taking the time. I can't wait to hang out with him and all of you in the future once it's safe to do so. And the Kevin's Barbecue Joints podcast and YouTube show is brought to you by Centex Smokers. They're out of Luling, Texas. Michael Johnson has been well known since he was a kid. The best way to get hold of him is on Instagram. It's Centex underscore smokers. That's C-E-N-T-E-X underscore smokers. Check out what he's done. He just did, he's done some cool stuff, but he just did a beautiful piece for Ernest Cervantes over at Burnt Bean Company in Seguin. I'll put a link to that below, but go to Centex underscore smokers and you can see it. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful. So his lead time is four to five months right now. Give him a DM, get a quote. Again, that's Centex smokers. And if you're liking these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out. I do a couple of these per week. Got a lot in the can too to get edited. So more coming. So hit the bell notification. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with all the podcasts, all the YouTube stuff. Got some really cool stuff coming up really, really soon. And uh, in the end, just stay safe. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for all the feedback. Take care. It's freezing cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, 26. <laughs> what? Uh, That's real cold. Uh, what is it here? It's cold for us here. It's 39. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's supposed to be one on Tuesday. Really? Yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah, so it's supposed to be one. Is that because of this Arctic trough thing coming? Uh, interesting. Yeah. Have you yeah. been in one before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, I little... lived in Idaho, southeastern Idaho for two years. For sure. <laughs> and it got down to below 40 degrees, you know, uh, for days at a time. And I remember one winter, we were actually snowed in. The snow came up to about six feet uh, at our front door. That is crazy. <laughs> I'm, I've always wanted, you know, li living in Los Angeles, you always dream of what it would it like to be snowed in? And then living it, I'm sure, is a lot different than imagining it. Yeah. So I got my second. COVID vaccination shot yesterday morning. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, it hurts so bad. <laughs> it's like, do you remember, or did you ever play any sort of punching game? Oh, yeah. In college? Uh -huh. Yeah. So it, it hurts like the strongest guy in the room just, just, like, just surprised you and walloped you as hard as he could. Really? It's something I haven't experienced before. <laughs> really? how, how do you feel? Do you feel any of this? Because they said sometimes. Or did you have the uh, the Pfizer or the Moderna? Pfizer. I hear that the Moderna is the rough one. But my but my point is, you know, uh, to my. Two main drinking buddies because they work at a research hospital. And uh, 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 one of them said, Oh, great. 
we can have socially distant porch beers. And I said, this isn't Pittsburgh, man. <laughs> this isn't, I'm not hanging out outside when it's one. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, it's so crazy. So I haven't left Dallas since October. Wow. And That's I'm itching to get out. Uh, I'm not very excited about it because I'm very risk aware. I'm, I will continue to double mask Mm -hmm. and socially distance. I'm not eating indoors. There's no way in hell I'm going to eat indoors unless I'm the only person in the room and there's great ventilation. Uh, the closest I'll get is an open patio, uh, any sort of plastic enclosure or heating system basically replicates the indoor Mm -hmm. setting. So I'm not going to do that either. I'm just going to eat on my trunk, man. Yeah, I know. No, you should. That's that's until, until... Until fall, I think. <laughs> it made me uh, crazy. Talk November. I think I posted November fifth, two thousand nineteen, was our last talk. It was probably probably spoke then in October, I assume. Uh, but how how have things been since? Because you were just coming on board. The you were coming on board with Texas Monthly. Your book had not come out yet. So that so I wanted to do catch up, and then I have a list of words or uh, types of tacos that I don't understand that you have talked about that I thought you could clarify, and I'll mispronounce, and you'll clarify. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, then, right. and then also I was thinking too, it would be kind of I don't know if you have a guilty fast food taco pleasure, like if there's one, and if you want to even admit it, but I wonder if there's a place that you go that. Or that you've gone since you were a kid that you still every so often crave, not necessarily go because things are different. But anyway, so let's, uh, how, th- how, th- how have things, how have things been since November of 2019? Uh, kind of up and down, <laughs> you know, uh, my book officially published in April of last year. Yes, there it is. <laughs> and... Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I even have like the bar. I even have like the barbacoa and barbecue taco thing. <laughs> and uh, uh, by that, so by February, University of Texas Press had begun to understand the impact that the pandemic was going to have on its own operations and on the operations of the university. So one of the the marketing director uh, rushed the book delivery systems So that once the book got into the warehouse a month early, a month before deliverables were set, uh, she rushed it out. Smart. Into the distribution system and told the partners, you can either fulfill the orders or hold on to them. And yeah, that was super smart. Uh, that kind of forward thinking or, or just insight is something that I I lack. <laughs> <laughs> so she's awesome. And that saved my book from being trapped in a warehouse for months. Wow. And it... Then in March, when everything shut down, uh, my my book tour was scrapped. Yeah, I was going to say that. But after I was initially upset about it, uh, I realized that it gave me a lot of 
freedom and a lot of other opportunity to visit with people that I wouldn't ha have otherwise done so. So uh, I've talked to people in Detroit and all over the country. Virtually. With yeah. 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 All over Zoom or whatever platform the hosting organization uh, um, prefers. Uh, I did the Texas Book Festival virtually. I did Southern Foodways virtually. I've done things with friends in California, you know, and it, it's just been kind of all over the place and great that way because I can talk to anyone. That's true. It does and, change the whole game in that sense. Yeah. And not spend any money <laughs> aside from my Zoom Pro account or, or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, uh, so, so that saved me a lot of money. It saved me a lot of grief. It's it freed me up to do what whatever I could imagine, uh, and was great. Did it impact book sales? Yes and no. Uh, by the week, I by the week of. The official publication date, which was April 15th of last year, QT Press had ordered a second printing. Oh. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, what the sales have been like since then, I haven't asked, but... Uh, well, I, I've just been really busy because we had to rearrange, we had to reimagine everything from the book to Texas Monthly. Uh, on uh, it, I mean, it really changed the way I view my job. It changed the way I view life. Uh, Luckily, I like my family, and they like me, <laughs> so we can hang out all day, every day, and it's fine, but it's been difficult. Like I said earlier, I've not really left Dallas since October. October, I got the vaccine, what was yesterday, February 11th, uh, and so two weeks from now, I'll have full efficacy, and I'll begin to, to plan trips then. I'm not going to start planning ahead now, because I don't know what the next two weeks might bring. Uh, uh, I do know that I want to get out of my house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's also it's really cold right now, as you as you stated. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like uh, it's uh twenty six. <laughs> uh, and so now, well, we had the the Texas Monthly Taco issue. Which I planned out. Right yes. <laughs> I came prepared this time. Like, je, je, <laughs> I mean, like this time of my all all the podcasts I've done, all the you with Jose. Yeah. Uh, thank you for for having that. <laughs> um, I uh, so I had a plan for that, and those plans were completely scrapped. I was asked for a backup plan and I offered it right away and that's what you see there more or less you know 
because it's the editorial process. You have to deal with page counts and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, that freed me up from doing a lot of traveling that I would have had to do otherwise. And I just wasn't in a position to risk my health yeah. and the health of my family because I was encountering rural areas where citizens and uh, restaurants, businesses weren't abiding by, by the state mandates. Now, regardless of how you feel about the pandemic, whether it's a hoax or not, the mandate is real. Yes. And, and so you need to abide by that, whether you want to or not. That's actually, that's a very good way to state it. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, part is real for sure. <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't matter what you think. Mm -hmm. If you don't adhere by this, you could lose business. You could l lose a lot more than that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I found myself walking in and walking out of places almost immediately, just on my heels, turning around and going and... Is that what caused your change in October? Is that what made you made your decision? I'm going to stay home. I could see the holidays coming, and yes, that was part of it. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, and usually, I try to wind down the the travel around the holidays uh, because I want to be with my family and. The kid has more days off school, so I have a flexible schedule. You know, uh, I just have to work while he plays video games. <laughs> He's working too. He's conquering. He has taken over my home office. Really? We're online schooling and gaming. I think it was an excuse to really set up his gaming systems. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the boy never leaves the room. <laughs> he's 12. He's reaching that age where he's constantly shutting the door. <laughs> uh, that's fine. That's so funny. But he's loving this. And that makes all of this a lot easier. Uh, I might, I am high risk. My son is high risk. I have a background in science and writing, so I'm not going to uh, roll the dice on this one. No, no, uh, no it's definitely not. It's, it's amazing that people <laughs> would write, roll the dice on something so critical like this. But what, have, what, have you learned anything about yourself during this time and also too like working wise like is it changed do you need a like a, a pat like a specific pattern during the day to get through the day yeah so i work better from a hotel room <laughs> uh <laughs> hilarious my wife decided it was a great idea to put okay an addition on the house Mm. And uh, we were fortunate enough to do this. Well, I had to throw out construction workers because they weren't wearing the mask properly. It was really, really loud. I live in a 111-year-old craftsman bungalow. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, walls are thin. Yeah, I'd say the walls are. Uh, uh, yeah, like everything shakes because it's pier and beam, <laughs> uh, uh, and the noise was just awful. It it was so stressful that I had a seizure, and, and I had to find another office uh, within walking distance. Uh, luckily, uh friend had a space 
for me that she didn't to use. So hotels are great because they're quiet. Uh, and uh, I've learned that I don't have to rush. Uh, the last few trips that I took were very much whirlwind tours because I could tell that I wasn't going to be traveling much by the end of the year. Uh, and that was exhausting. I don't have to do that anymore. I can hit one or two places, five places in a day, spread it out, uh, take my time, and I'll feel better, and I'll sleep better. Uh, and I can, I can focus on what's important. Uh, I do wish I had the opportunity to talk to people face to face for my writing, for my reporting, because there's no substitute for that. You, you can gain someone's trust just by looking them in the eye mm -hmm. uh, over the phone or over Zoom. The people I talk to, they'll share, but they're, it's just not the same. Mm -hmm. So, so that's something that, that I've learned about myself. Um, it's nice having my wife working across the house so that when I'm bored, I can just go in there and uh, tease her. <laughs> I have learned that I forget to eat lunch when I'm working at home, uh, which is something I would never forget while, while traveling. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Is it because you're so consumed in what you're doing or just distracted? Or... Yeah, I, I, I'm doing a lot. Uh, working, you know, researching, writing, editing, uh, reading, uh emailing, you know, all of these things, transcribing, and all, all these things that take up a lot of time. Yeah. You know, uh, it's also nice to be able to help my son when he's having a bad day at school uh, while he's thriving. Doing virtual learning everyone has bad days once in a while yeah yeah no of course and if i can help him with something as small as a hug that makes all the difference no definitely uh, yeah and especially at like you could do that instantly you could because yeah. you're at home it doesn't you yeah. have to like get to the school or do something. Now, does he have the same t type of passion for food as you do? D does your wife? No. So my wife's vegetarian. Uh, she was not always a, a vegetarian. And the one thing that she says she misses is lengua, beef tongue. Uh, uh, my son is a gearhead. All right. He just loves cars. Uh, he dreams about cars. Wow. He's got subscriptions to car magazines. Uh, he reads w w websites, watches YouTube videos, I and mean, he's all about cars. <laughs> uh, wow. He definitely does not like to, to join me while I'm working uh, he doesn't always have a choice which is fine but th there was this one instance in Fort Worth where we had video ramen from a taco truck and we argued over whose turn it was 
to eat the soup. Wow, that was actually that was one of my on my list that I had mentioned earlier. Of that I was that was one of the things I was going to bring up. But that's funny about the. <laughs> I think you might have even mentioned that. I think that's why maybe that was in the back of yeah. my yeah yeah. So I mentioned that in the review, and I mentioned that in an Instagram post or something like Perhaps, that. That's what it was. Yeah, because it was so unusual. Usually, I'm just like, hey, we're going to go here. Do you want carne asada? Do you want fajita? Do you want barbacoa? Because he's a beef guy. And he usually turns me down. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I can eat the whole thing. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's your job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, what was the name of this place? Calistense. Uh, it is a taco truck in Fort Worth. Uh, w- w- woman owned. Uh, she's from California, but her family's from Guadalajara and Sinaloa hmm. as well. So she's starting up a side trailer that's going to be Sinaloan seafood so I'm very excited about that that's exciting seafood is the bomb (laughs) 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 Um, cheesy and shrimp and I mean just awesome Uh, and uh The setup was a, a drive through. So you're comfortable in your car no matter what. Uh, you can play any music you want. You can kick back with your family or your friends. It moves pretty quickly, but I waited more than an hour from the time we rolled up to the time we ate. Uh, it was worth the wait for sure. And I would go back. Uh, I've heard that the wait can stretch around the nearest corner. Uh, I've also heard that there are lulls during the day. I've never experienced that, (laughs) (laughs) but if the owner says so, I'm sure it's true. <laughs> Do you order? So then you order online ahead of time, right? Uh, no. Oh, okay. You, uh, the owner is in fr- front of the truck with a notepad and masked up. She takes wow. your order. Uh, my only problem with it is it's cash on. It, 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 it's cash or. Something called Zell or Zelly. Oh, Zelly is not. I think that's like Wells Fargo, B of A. I think they all have a stake in that. It's their money transfer system. Yeah. Yes. So probably also a Bitcoin. I'm sure. I mean, an altcoin, whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. So they have that. Oh, interesting. Uh, interesting. I try not to use cash. I now the fewer. surfaces I touch the better uh, early on in the pandemic my wife well I should say my wife has always mocked the fact that I'm kind of jerk germophobic uh, but at, as soon as the science be- became available and was developing she turned to me one day and said you were right (laughs) and of course i said i'm always right (laughs) that's uh, over well (laughs) yeah that's that wasn't the smartest response i would say to a wife or anyone that you yeah (laughs) maybe that's something you're learning see there's another thing you're learning (laughs) we're learning through this interview that's what it what what you're telling me with this beer, yeah, and I'm like pronouncing it so basic, uh, the beer and ramen, is that it's nice that people would queue up in line 
like without paying without paying ahead of time yeah. for something that's it's special that's and that's how things have changed so much during this is that people are waiting people are willing to wait and I, maybe it's that patience thing because i fi- i find that i have at most times more patience now and i do things a little slower intentionally yeah i think that's true uh i definitely don't rush to get out of bed i don't rush to the store uh, i try not to go to the store yeah. you know uh um there's more emphasis on what's important and rushing is not important. Waiting in certain lines is not important. Uh, I think it's funny that barbecue lines continue to be so long. uh, And now taco lines are also getting long. People are finding what they like mm-hmm. and they're willing to line up for it. Uh, uh, so that's great as long as they keep their distance, as long as everyone a- abides by the mandates uh, that are either local or from the state. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You definitely appreciate things more for sure. Yeah. It seems like too that the that tacos and barbecue in general are perfectly suited for surviving a pan- the, the businesses themselves for surviving the pandemic. I, I'm sure that there are taco places or uh, Latina places that, that have closed down as well as barbecue places. But in as a rule, it seems like it's pandemic proof. I hate to say that, but it's... yeah, generally speaking. They are. Uh, especially in Texas and you know, t- to a similar extent, Southern California, mm-hmm. uh, where you eat on the street or you eat through a drive through and you can eat on the go. You can eat on your truck, mm-hmm. trunk. Uh, it's not like a lot of other coastal areas where dining has not evolved in that manner. Uh, and well, barbecue and tacos are grab and go food. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, uh, the whole idea of setting down to enjoy this food is recent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to take a yeah, to and to take photos of it and do all that. It's it's yeah. more of an experience. Yeah, it used to be. Yeah, you'd get your food, eat it quickly, and if you were with a couple another person, you guys would eat it and then get back to work or yeah, or bring it home to your family. On your way to work, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's yeah. all this stuff. So, uh, what's really helping these places is the fact that they're generally small family owned operations that can adapt quickly. One example is window service. Uh, One example is drive through like we just discussed. Um, I think that the taco window is definitely the future and you've got to apply that to to barbecue uh you don't need a lot of space uh it's quicker uh it's cheaper uh you you can use multiple components across different preparations Mm -hmm. uh, and that facilitates a solid foundation and uh, a customer base that that knows what they're going to get and knows that they're going to get it quickly and it'll be something satisfying 
and well put together. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that a lot of businesses, at least if they have foresight, will try to create a, like a to go component. When this is all over, if it's in whatever sense it's over. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Yesterday, as they hear that Johnson and Johnson, I think was saying that you need this will probably be a yearly booster. There'll be a yearly, which makes sense. That's logical. Like the flu shot. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No big deal. Yeah, I'm okay with that. We had, we had talked about tortillas the last time, and you had said how much you love store bought like Mission brand tortillas. <laughs> we had talked about how you, you were trying to let people know they should try to go outside their comfort zone, and and you had written about a colonial tortilla, I think, in San Antonio, and then I was curious what you thought about. I know I think you had written about Flores tortillas. So can we talk about tortillas a little bit and about yeah. flour tortillas? And okay, flour tortillas are great. And they're all over the place in Texas and California. You know, one of the things, and, and the borderlands, you know, uh, um, what I think is so fascinating about tortillas is everyone, or not everyone, but a lot of people, you'll hear people say things like, Corn tortillas are the only legitimate tortilla, and then they order their tacos on flour. <laughs> uh, okay, buddy. <laughs> it, it, most of the corn that Mexico uses comes from the U.S., <laughs> and it That's comes hilarious. from the heartland. So if you're a Midwesterner and you're eating flour, like just eat the corn. <laughs> It's there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but flour tortillas, when made well, are exquisite. exquisite. Uh, there are regional variations. Uh, in Brownsville, for example, they're huge, squishy, huh. but thin. Too, it's this weird kind of in between state where it's flaky but substantial huh. and um so good um then you drive up the rio Grande valley 40 minutes and the, the tortillas are probably six inches versus 10 huh. or 12 inches uh, uh, that's great. Uh, and now, not that Flores is the first one t to do what they do, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but, but they're the ones who have really marketed it well. And that would be the flour tortilla made with smoked beef tallow <laughs> versus the traditional lard, mm -hmm. which is pork, right? Uh, and it's wonderful. It, it smells like a pit room. It does. It really does. Which, it up on your stove i mean on your range top you know and, and and i think it's great it's chewy roll it up with butter and it's, it's like oily. the lily <laughs> no i've i've had it that way many times it's, uh, <laughs> and i've ordered it for many people and i've often said just just put a little butter just heat it up and put it in. <laughs> yeah so I actually uh, got a bunch of flour tortillas recently and ran them through the paces. I heated them up on my gas range burner on a comal. Uh, and in the microwave. I know that's sacrilegious, but I'm very methodical. Okay. No, you have important. Yeah. 
and then I uh, I buttered them, I salted them, I buttered and salted them. I made fajita the tacos with them, and then I made breakfast tacos with them. <laughs> Uh, so that was, I mean, that was a lot of flour tortillas. <laughs> uh, and it was great, <laughs> but it was a lot. <laughs> did you have places send you those or did you, are the local little places or? No, I just went to, um, one of, one Texas supermarket where they make them in-house. Uh, and, uh. Just wanted to run them through the paces. It was flour, uh, um, butter flavored flour, and whole wheat flour. Uh, and before pe- people start hi- hyperventilating about whole wheat flour. Tortillas, I will say that there is a town in Puebla where they specialize in whole wheat flour uh. tortillas. Tepeac, I think that's the name. Uh, and yeah, I mean, so, so I ran them through the paces. It was great. Uh, I learned a lot about tortillas i learned a lot about what i like uh and i happily do it again that sounds that's an interesting so is that going coming soon to a piece near you <laughs> i don't know or it just works in your brain it's just it's a good way to brain you know it was, it, it was really interesting i thought about well the whole thing started with let me get a whole bunch of commodity corn tortillas get the mission brand get the maseca stuff you know um because that's what most places use uh you can't afford to nixtamalize your own corn and sell your food at a price that most people want so i bought like 10 bags of tortillas and I never realized how really bad they were. <laughs> it was like eating a whole bunch of sugar on one. I, I, I tore some up and, and and ate it and I shook my head in sh- sh- shock because The sugar rush Interesting. that I got immediately was shocking. Wow. Uh, I almost want to now buy a couple store just to see because that's it's interesting that you would say that. It, it make it does make sense. It's kind of gross, but it's a... because of all the preservatives yeah. that they yeah. need to put in there. You know, uh, I literally went. Down the aisle, I was like, okay, I'll take that. Let me look at the back of the packaging to see what's inside it. The more stuff, the better. <laughs> if there was, if there were packs of locally made tortillas that were nixtamalized, I have to put them back on the shelf. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> yeah, God. isn't that sad? That's so funny that you would have to do that for this experiment that you were doing. And then my wife is there with me, in shock, watching me <laughs> put stuff in the cart. And how many are you gonna get? I'm going down the aisle here. <laughs> it's amazing too how many types there are, probably. Yeah, and not just the big ones, but locally made as well, yeah. and. and so I was just, I, I, that was a big fail. 
I I crashed and burned on that one. Are there places that you're really excited to like once you're you you're two weeks out out of this second mm-hmm. shot? You really other places that you're dying to go to or that you want to go to again that you can mention that you're there are. Uh, I'm, if I can mention, there are a lot of pop-ups in Houston and San Antonio that I want to go to. Uh, there are trucks that I want to visit. Um, one of the pop-ups, though, is a bakery pop-up huh. out of San Antonio, and it's just... It's, South of Austin. Uh, so sh- she'll deliver pan dulces, like flavored conchas, and all those gr- great things up to Austin. Oh my gosh. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about that. that that's Comadre. Panaderia, uh, and I mean, just places that, that I, I'd like to try out. Mr. Diablo in San Antonio is a truck. There are a lot of pop ups in Houston, like um, Papalo, um, Tatemo. I want to get down to the valley again, but it's, it's, I don't think it, there's yeah. Good, a good time uh, for a while. I want to try Taconeta in El Paso, which nixtamalizes their own corn, and they have a taco window. Uh, and uh, there's a good chance that I'll be doing that because my wife's family is from El Paso. I think I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah. So her her grandfather built a cabin in New Mexico. It's in the family still. So we visit almost every summer and you have to go through El Paso. So, you know, the odds are good that I'm going to try Taconeta. And, and I think you had said before how El Paso has such a diverse amount. Of, there's a lot of places that you... Oh, like, you love, love El Paso, right? I love El Paso. Uh, hopefully, this summer, I can go to Juarez. But, yeah, man, El Paso is this magical corner of texas that's so far away from everything uh los angeles is closer to El paso than dallas is which is like it's hard to wrap my brain around (laughs) that (laughs) yeah so i'm really excited about that and i hope i get to go uh to the other side and just enjoy it. Uh, Austin's great. It's got some good things coming, but I think that Houston and San Antonio have a lot more going for it right now and a lot more things that I'm interested in. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, right now everyone's going Kaga over Lydia, <laughs> right? Well, okay, In Los Angeles too. Yeah. Well, you know, Texas's Bifidia movement really started in San Antonio. Uh, so that's the place to go if you really want to get 
really great stuff. What defines uh, I've always often wondered and and looking at you know, I only see it on Instagram mostly because I'm I'm pretty sheltered here. But I uh what defines a good beer? Yet? Like what what is it is it what makes it because sometimes could it be really greasy? Like is there so, is there like a fine line between what makes sense and what people are are doing properly? So Birria is technically a stew. It means mess. Um, and it's got chilies in it. And um, aromatics that are cooked down. Uh, you can put whatever protein you want in there. The, and you should eat it as a so Bidia ramen is as close to it as you're going to get if you're not going to order it as itself traditionally it's goat and goat or lamb uh, but the regional variations are myriad uh, you can have chicken you can have anything that can withstand the process uh, and that can take hours so the taco is just a component of like it's like an addition to that it's not it's the stew it's the soup yeah and then it's and then but then they're cooking the tacos they're using that as almost like not glaze but they're using it in the cooking process yeah so, so traditionally tortillas are served on the side uh Tacos, the, then you can make them yourself, right? You, you can take the meat out, put it in the tortilla, or just dip the tortillas into the consomme. Consomme is hard to make. You have to get the, a lot of the fat out. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're right. It can be very greasy. It can not taste right. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but uh, I, I prefer the stew. <laughs> Interesting. That's yeah. no. It's just it's just funny how and it. I guess because it looks kind of sexy on Instagram. It's yeah, and, and it looks unusual. It's like what are they doing with that? Like I'm sure that's that's the thought process, but I didn't, and I, I've seen a lot of places that sell consomme too. In general, I know that that's, and I, and I've heard that people have said that that's for hangovers. I think don't people claim that there's oh, hangovers? I like that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it's worth just, just drinking. Um, uh, and as a matter of fact, when I was in Mexico in 2019, cause that was a lot. No, I went in 2020 just two Matamoros. But in 2019, I was in Michoacan, which loves Bidia, and I was at a little stand, and one of my friends got to stew. I got the tacos. It was kid goat. It was <laughs> delicious no cheese but as you might imagine here in texas cheese and beef <laughs> with tortillas is a sure thing uh-huh. <laughs> yes it's just yeah and it's yeah it makes people yeah and you, you have to look at your customer that's i'm sure that's that's the angle well yes so, so if one place probably the best place in Austin that does it. Uh, La, La Tunita 512 is a little trailer and the owner was selling goat media but it wasn't selling. Hmm. So he switched to beef and now <laughs> he sells out in like three hours. That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, 
So you have to know your customer. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And Bidia has saved a lot of businesses. Um, it's not always Bidia. They just call it that. You know, just like a lot of barbecue places will serve tacos on tortillas from whatever <laughs> and call the meat whatever they want because it looks like whatever they want it to look like. Are they, um, are they, is it barbacoa? Is it everything barbacoa, it seems? <laughs> <laughs> well, we get the word barbecue from barbacoa. Yes. You can't have barbecue without barbacoa. Uh, Maybe traditionally. Yeah. Well, well and, and the pit cooker approximates the pozo, but people are now smoking suadero or carnitas, and you just can't really do that. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work out that way. Uh, but what you can do is sell these tacos at a premium mm -hmm. and m make more money off of two ounces in a tortilla than you can from a slice of brisket yeah. or two slices of brisket or three, you know, and a, a, a meat and three, you know, or, uh, plate and with the climate it's you know you want these places to survive so it's hard to yeah it's hard to yeah like <laughs> nitpick oh, I, as much as yeah i'm not going to call out a place right now uh once we get over the hump here then it's fr free game right and back to normal <laughs> Let, well, I wanted to do before because it's we're getting on an hour, and, but I wanted to talk a little bit about Tex-Mex, and then I also wanted to talk about how we how I mentioned at the beginning. Is there a fast food taco that you love? Is there one, or at least that harkens back to a childhood memory? No, <laughs> that's wow. Well, that makes me feel kind of good. I, I mean, I I do enjoy Taco Cabana's breakfast tacos. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh. They're solid. Yeah. Uh, I, I did a fast food roundup, fast food taco roundup, and I was really surprised by Taco Casa. Uh, it's super good. I mean, it's a crispy sh shell, but it actually tastes like corn, and the cheese tastes like cheese, and the beef. <laughs> tastes like ground beef everything tastes like it's supposed to taste like and so that was really surprising to me because you go to taco bell mm. and we'll, we'll, while they're marketing geniuses the, pr the product isn't meant to be consumed on a normal l l level it's better with when you're drunk uh-huh it's almost like it's it's almost to me it's a vehicle for something spicy on like a their hot yeah. sauce on it, which even their yeah. hot sauce is is bizarre. Well, what I like a lot is also Jack in the Box. Their tacos are very much like um, tra tra traditional Mexican. Tacos Dorados to, with the beef and the seal and the deep frying that way. Interesting. They're very good. Yeah. I've had yeah, I've had late night. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, and they're and they're also very inexpensive. I, I often wonder like you could it would, I don't know how healthy it would be, but I you could eat fast food. Like there's so many places that you can go. Like Taco Bell for like fifteen dollars you can get the most amount of food, but it's yeah, pretty much garbage. But it's but you can, at least it would fill you up, make you yeah. sick, make you sick probably, but not sick as in you're gonna die, but I mean, not feel great. So yeah, several years back was the first time I had been to Taco Bell in like fifteen years, 
and it was fine until I started to move. Uh, <laughs> then I didn't feel so great. Not funny. But this time around, it was fine. Yeah. yeah. For the fast food taco roundup. And I'll put I'll put a link to that. That's. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't hold you to anything. And, and, when, and, and when I do visit you, uh, we will not go to Taco Bell at all. I will, I'll treat you to anything other than Taco Bell. Well, now, Tex Mex, I, the term, can you explain a little bit like what that term means? Because I, it means something different. When I went to Texas and actually had Tex Mex, I'm like, it was because coming from Southern California, Tex Mex is chilies. So, I mean, on Tex Mex versus Cow Mex. There's a fine line, but Tex-Mex as a term really didn't join the, the popular uh, parlance until like the 70s. Okay. Um, and it's just basically regional Mexican food that was... bolstered by industrialization. So after the Mexican-American War, the border was set as the Rio Grande, and people were cut off from a lot of ingredients that they could get. Uh, but also Mexican food, Food is hyper-regional, so you use what you have around you. There was already a difference regionally. It's just with the border, it very much defined what was available and what was not. And things like chili powder... And refrigeration I, I just accelerated that development. Uh, Velveeta is great. You know, chili con queso is great. It comes from queso fundido, uh, which is Mexican. Mm -hmm. It's just our regional variation of it. Using different cheeses, uh, and that's fine. I, what I don't understand is how Tex-Mex outside of Texas could be so bad. I, I say with me, honestly, I do not I understand. Get it everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's the same ingredients. Uh, things like puffy tacos are hard to make as it is. Uh. But I've had good puppy tacos in New York City, uh, which seems like an outlier. For, for right, that you got to actually find great Tex-Mex in New York. But Tex-Mex should be able to travel. It's built to travel. I think it's built to travel. I was just going to say that it is built to travel. And I, and Puffy Tacos were on my list too because this is like a seven hour interview that I've created like that, <laughs> that we're trying to condense into an hour and 15 minutes. But I, but I, but I Puffy Tacos too that didn't, I have, we, I have, I think I've been, only had it once in California. I think if I'm even remembering it correctly, but it was so long yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so the same family that owns that owns Ray's Drive-In, which is in San Antonio. They own the trademark for the term. Oh. Uh, and another branch of the same family owns Henry's, which is in San Antonio as well. Uh, and they're like the royal family of Puffy Tacos. Uh, and it's all great. I've been... To Arturo's, I love it, mm -hmm. uh, and I l l love Ray's. It's like going to church because there's so much history there, and so much reverence for the product and for the history. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so nice. Like, 
I could ask you another question, but it would, I, we, would, we would go on for 15 minutes. I'd, I'd, and maybe we'll do a part three. I, number one, I just wanted to see you. You look great. I like your beard. You're looking, Thank you. <laughs> it, looks, it, it, it suits you. It definitely, like certain people like beard, like it, they had the COVID beard for a while, but it does seem to. And I, do you think that's, is that something that's going to travel for the rest of the year or is it? I don't know. It depends on if I have to make special appearances. Uh, my wife likes it. That's all that matters. She prefers it, actually. Nice. Uh, uh, that is all that matters, really. Yeah. Uh, no, well, you have to like it, too. Shaving, just like every other man hates shaving. Yes. Uh, it's good for your. Ever- it's good for your face, Jose. It is. I think it's isn't it supposed to be healthy for your face to not shave as much. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> You're doing it. <laughs> Where did you get your taco what? hat? What? Oh, You're... this is from Taco Gear. I think it's tacogear.com. Oh, that's cool. Uh, uh, great guy, great company, Gerald Flores, out of Corpus Christi. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Love him. Love his work. What are all the different ways to get a hold of you? Uh, pretty much at Taco Trail. Anything <laughs> seems like it, right? <laughs> On Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Clubhouse, uh, TikTok, basically anything. TikTok. Uh, oh, I Snapchat, don't know. TikTok. Snapchat, TikTok. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think yeah. of what are the. Uh... <laughs> I'm joking. No, I'm totally good. I do have a Snapchat account, but I deleted the app because yeah. I just didn't get it. Yeah, I think yeah, that's a it's a different generation. That's that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instagram's the coolest in my mind, and like I mean, it works the like it makes the most sense, and I'm and, connected to the most people through Instagram. Yeah, so Instagram and Twitter are, are the best ways to follow me, yeah. and and also TexasMonthly.com. Yeah, and then you could and weekly you're publishing something weekly, if not more than weekly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to get things published twice a week but uh it doesn't always work out that way because maybe i'm working on a whole bunch of things maybe my editors are working on a whole bunch of things mm-hmm. but at least once a week definitely yeah. and then your book you can still on is there a, is there a bookstore that you prefer people to go to is other than the big one or their local bookstore their local bookstore okay i get their local independent bookstore yeah We'll have we'll have a great day. It was so good to talk to you, and yeah. can't wait to get my vaccine. I'll probably I'm I'm 50, so I I might be in that second wave, which is maybe June. <laughs> so I'll I'll see you in September. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to get out to Southern California yes. soon. Yeah, I would love to see you when you come here, without without a doubt. If 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 at eight feet, but <laughs> what. A, <laughs> No, but uh, by, by then, no, I, I'm also the sole caregiver for my mother, so, and she's, mm-hmm. I'm hoping, and I have a really good relationship, sadly, with the, the, the one of the guys at CVS, the head pharmacist at CVS, I'm, they're often, so, well, have, have a great one, so good to see you, and this will be out Bye. next week, I'll, I'll give you links to all of it. All right, great, thank you so much, Kevin. Take care, good to see you, oh, this is a great time, Bye. thank you, you, you made my Thursday, take care. Oh, really, really, it was great.